hello and welcome to the next edition of the Loudcast. Today I'm joined by um, a friend of mine from racing, a guy hopefully you'll all know, an absolute legend when it comes to stats, when it comes to, comes to Cheltenham, Mr. Brian Gold. Hi Brian, how are you? Hello Paul, how are you? Nice to see you. It's good to see you. Okay. And thank you very, very much for joining me today and giving me a bit of your time. Not at all. As a busy man like yourself with all these websites to update, I'm sure... Uh, um, I'm glad glad to get a few minutes with you. So first of all, Brian, I'd like to sort of you, you've got a great website, goldstats.com. If you'd like to um, just tell us a bit, bit about that, and how it sort of came about, and how it's going at the minute. Well, uh, for people who probably may not have heard of it, it's called Gold Stats. That's spelled G A U L T Stats, all one word. Um, I first went to Cheltenham in 1985. Uh, I was in awe of the place then, and I'm still in awe of the place. Um, and when I was there, I just started to collect information. I have a head for this sort of stuff. So over the last 30-odd years, I've collected an awful lot of uh, books and statistics and uh, things about the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, and about 1995, I started to produce a document for my friends who went with me. Uh, I produced it, and they, they all seemed to like it. And about 2013, I then uh, got a Google website. And after a while, I decided just to get my own website. So that's that's where we are. So we're goldstats.com. Um, it's got about uh, a page of stats, huge page of stats for all uh, each race. There's stats on uh, jockeys, uh, bookies. There's stats on trainers. There's stats on Willie Mullins, the way he doesn't like stats. There's stats on price-wise. There's stats and, and everything that I can I can think of. People seem to like it. So every year I produce this site. I've just released it there last week, about the 15th. And uh, this year I'm trying to promote it and get some money for charity. So this year I'm promoting it for uh, North Down Samaritans. I have a friend called Wesley who's been a, a, a Samaritan uh, since 2007. For the last four years he's been in charge of North Down uh, Samaritans. And he looks after everything, odd jobs, looks after people, training, things like that. And it's this year is the 50th anniversary of the formation of the branch of uh, the Samaritans in North Down. And they tell me that they need £30,000 a year. They have to make, they have to produce £30,000 a year to make each uh, branch work. So that, that comes just by charitable donations. So this year I'm trying to raise two and a half grand to help the Samaritans with their stuff. Okay, mate? Fantastic. Okay. Okay. It's such a great cause. All right. It's such a great site. I think anyone who got half a head about Cheltenham needs to be going through your site. To well, that's, you're very kind. Sometimes I think it, it, appe it appeals to people with a certain mind, I have to say. That, uh, uh, the thing about the stats is that I always find that uh, I will produce uh, the two rules about the site. One is that... Uh, the beauty of each stat lies solely in the eye of the beholder. So, Paul, there might be this a stat. Something may have happened ten years in a row, and you decide this year. Well, that's not going to happen. Well, I'm not going to get offended. All yeah. right. So, you it's your money, and you do what you want with it. But that's the stats, just as you as you wish. And the second rule is, and it's it's important this year. All these stats will die at some stage. At some stage, Willie Mullins or Gordon Elliott or Nicky Henderson will break these stats and you've got to make sure that you know about it. So that's, that's it. it. That, that. Well, one of the biggest stats for years were, were Ireland were hardly ever getting a winner at Cheltenham. Look at that stat now. Oh, that's, they've got huge numbers now. That, what, uh, what was it, 18 last year? 18-10 it was last year. It was, was it 18? Yeah. It was, one, one year, was it 23? It was one year, yes. One year yes, as well. Like like that, uh, remember the years, were, not even that long ago, Don Gwynn was going to be the big Irish hope and... Sure. Well, it was 1989, Galmsway. was uh, Galmoy, was yeah. the, was the uh, year we only had one, that was in the stairs. Yeah, so, uh, it's, it's, it's funny how it's gone nearly full circle, hasn't uh -huh, it? Uh -huh. don't think it, it winds a few people up for some reason. <laughs> Certainly on racing Twitter, I'd be very keen to promote the Irish race and how great it is, but um, <laughs> it seems to wind a few people up. But you're right about the stats, because as you know, I, I, lo I love a punt, I love a bet. I like to think I know enough of no, you know, to put, put my money where my, where my mouth is. And sometimes I just overthink and I'll think about every horse and how it can win, how it can't win. And I'll have picked out a million different stats why something can happen or why it can't happen. And well, at, at the end, of, at the, uh, after the festival, but the week after the festival, there'll be a page going on this site which I will go through every result. Yeah. And that will tell you which stats each, each, each winner will fill some stats yeah. and not fill others. And that's just the way that that's all part Has of it. There been, was there any, been any big stats this year? You're looking at? Uh, well, there's two huge stats may, may, may go by. There hasn't been 
a winner, last year's winner of the Supreme, has yet hasn't won the champion hurdle this year since 1971. Beulah's the last one to do the double. Yeah. So Constitution Hill is a very short favourite to break that stat this year. And then there's another one, uh, the Chalo hurdle, which is a, a hurdle at Newbury in late December. The winner of that has never won the uh, Ballymore hurdle, which is a, a similar race at Cheltenham. Yeah. And there's a very strong favourite in this year by Paul, from Paul Nichols called Hermes Atlanta. Yeah. So uh, the, the, those, those two stats are under threat this year. They're under threat, but they, as you say, <laughs> the stats are there to be broken, but they could they could be continued for a long while yet. Those are two big favourites, and certainly Constitution Hill looks yep. to be... Three, one to three. Right. There's a potential superstar going forward for yeah, her. But, yeah. um, I like to think State Man might give him a bit of a race. Well, I've I've done the forecast already, so I'm hoping, yeah. hoping that that's the way it's going to be. Well, we'll certainly come on. I have a couple of great <laughs> bets. I'll have to, anti-post bets I'll have to tell you about later. Okay, good. Um, so your first Cheltenham memory, you said it was back in 1985? Oh, my first Cheltenham memory is watching it on TV whenever I was a child. And, uh, oh, but yeah. in 19... I was at university in Queens in 1976 and uh, we never worked that week as students. We uh, we yeah. seemed to just have ourselves parked and <laughs> never worked in that. And, uh, yeah. That's been, I've only ever, I think the only week I've ever worked at Cheltenham Fest was 1980. I've, I've never worked a week apart from that yeah. since 1976. So going back to horses like um, um, Golden Signet, 79 one and the, the, the Supreme, he was a fantastic horse. Um, so that's where I was. we first went to Cheltenham as in 1985. 85 is when you first went. Yes, okay. we didn't. We didn't have any money. Uh, we bought, bought we both brand new suits and shoes and, and tried to look look the part because you're just you're just in awe of the place. And yeah. that's it. You know, that, that's a good aspect of it. Yeah, I think I've been going about the last 15 years or so now. Right. And I've even seen it change so much. And what are you going this year? I always go for the first day. Right. Always fly on the Monday night and fly home on the Wednesday. Right. Okay. Is my way. What about yourself? I haven't been for three or four years, so I, but I'm going Tuesday, Wednesday this year. Okay. I have a... Uh, I've got a very nice invite to a box on the Tuesday. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so that's well, there's any spare tickets going. <laughs> well, very kind, so very yeah. kind. So I'm looking forward to that. That's fantastic. I think that Tuesday's the best day of the week. And and for all sorts of reasons. I think the racing's really good. But I also think, I think I said this to you before many a time, the Monday night when you're at Cheltenham, oh, everyone's full of dreams. You have a pocket full of money. Every, everybody's got a pocket full of money and everybody has 28 winners. Yeah, every, and, and We all have it. And, and the Tuesday, the excitement, the roar. And, and, um, and you forget that there's bookmakers you know, fighting in car parks to get pitches in that yeah. place because there's that much money to be made. In it, you know? Yeah, I'm sure that the pitches are worth... I don't, know I don't know about the worst, but I know the uh, the axes must be huge. Yeah. You know, talking to t- you take a, you take a team with you to to Cheltenham and maybe one two pitches. You're talking must be five thousand with time to accommodation and things yeah. like that. So it's it's a it's a it's, you need to make you need to make money. You know. Well, that's I mean, you get those what, what people used to call Cheltenham the favourites graveyard, didn't they? Oh yes, <laughs> oh yeah. Not la- last year now. Uh, I know a firm, a local who went last year who'd been going for a long, long time. And they told me there was there was wasn't there four favourites in the first five on on Gold Cup Day. See, Gold Cup Day is yeah, the day yeah. when the, Gold Cup Day is when the day when the bookies take the most money. Yeah. People don't realise that uh, there's big money taken Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but on Gold Cup Day there's huge money been taken. And if you for, first three, four of the first five favourites winning, uh, you'll find they that was the first year that the boys had talking about. That's the first they've told me that the first time they've lost. Really? Uh, and they'd be going 15, 20 years. That, that's phenomenal, isn't it? You think of all the great favourites that have won the Gold Cup over the years too, you know, like Cotto and Denman over the... Well, that's the thing. Yeah. You always remember the, the ones that win, but you never remember, you never, yeah. remember, the, you never remember the plunges that were at last. Or, for example, what, Dino Blue was 11 to 8 for a Mare's Novice Hurt and a Mare's Novice Hurt last year. Nobody remembers that. Yeah. No. 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 It's the same as the, the County Hurt. Look, there's never been too many short winners of that. Well, it was, that was one of the winners last year. Last year. Statement, statement. Yeah. yeah. You know what, it goes to show you, but it's, it's, it's the best week of the year for me too. I think I've worked a full week of Cheltenham and live in memory. I used to um, have to always work St. Patrick's Day in my old job. Um, it was part of, you know, just part of what we had to do. And if it fell on a Thursday or a Friday, it was always just, well, it fell on a Saturday, it was nearly as bad because I'd had four days of enjoying myself. Well, it's got to such a stage that people I know, all um, friends who never never think about horse racing and wouldn't actually uh, cross their mind when Cheltenham comes on the television during that week they will just immediately think of me yeah that's, that's it that, that, that. it's funny yeah your, your friends you don't really get get a chance to see, see as much 
Oh, well, how do you fancy for the gold cup? Then you know, and you get all the get all the taxes today, and people. But sure, that's maybe what it's all about. I love it. I'm sure yeah, you, yeah, yes. you love it even more. Yep. Um, so nineteen eighty five was your first time heading over. You've been many a time since then. I've been. We. I did twenty years in a row, oh. and uh, and then I built a house, and after a couple of years, I couldn't afford to go, <laughs> and uh, and that's got away for it. And then I got. I find myself that. Uh, with the internet coming up, uh, I find it's a, it's probably the wrong thing to say, but you are you are open to more information sitting in your own living room in front of a laptop and the television than yeah. you are on course. You got to raise when you're on course. You're not going to be exposed to all the information everybody else has. Yeah. So you, that's just the way it is. Yeah. So I used to st- I used to go two three two or three days two, uh, two days or maybe a fr- I have a friend my friend who I first went with in 1985 is just about to do his 37th, 37th, because there was a year it was off of foot and mouth. Oh, yes, I remember foot so, and mouth. So, so he's, he's yeah. going on a 37th trip this year. I, I imagine foot and mouth. I was actually in university when foot and mouth happened, and that was the year after, I think, was when I really got into Cheltenham. But I can't imagine, think, if something like that happened now, <laughs> I can't imagine how good I'd be about it. Oh, well, um, it, was, it wasn't it was, good. No, it was no. just the most awful thing I can imagine. So, 20 years in a row you went, you must have seen some fantastic races over those times. Um, yes, it would depend. Like standout moments? Um, it's, a, it's a Brack winning three champion hurdles would stand out. It, it was a classic, it was a great horse. Um, it's You just remember the funny ones. You remember, uh, you may not remember, John Thomas McNamara, God rest his soul, was uh, on Rift Dove uh, winning in uh, the Four Miler. The Four Miler was a race I've always loved. One of yeah. those horses are probably not the most cooperative partners and you need the top class jockeys to make it. But yeah. he had a great ride against Davy Russell, I think it was, yeah. one year. I remember, that. I remember things like that. Uh, uh, it's, 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 you have Well Chief winning a, an Oracle. These are the ones you always remember the ones you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, that that's the sort of things. Um, and there was another one. I have to say the most, one of the early, first years I remember was a horse called Rose Ravine uh, winning uh, the stairs. If you've ever watched that race, Rose Ravine beat a horse called Crimson Embers who, okay. uh, they're both in the same stable. Yeah. And what happened was that uh, Rose Ravine nearly put uh, Crimson Embers into the ditch as they came round the corner. The, the, uh, it wasn't the, a friend of mine said it wasn't an interference, it was more of an assault. And uh, what happened was that because they were in the same ownership and the same uh, uh, same ownership and same trainer, there was no objection. So the horse just kept the race. So yeah. these are little things I remember. Yeah. yeah. I, I, th- some days I remember that course. Hurricane Fly went on his first yes. champion hurdle. Yes. When he seemed to be told, everyone kept saying he'd never win it. He, he can't, can't get up a help. He can't get up a help. Um, Western War Horse beating. Um, Champion Fever in yes, the Oracle. Very good. Do, uh, Harry do, Eustace won the Champion Hurdles one of my first times. Duva and, yeah. and uh, Votura winning the Supreme. Great. Oh, yeah. Great race. I've, I've got a great story about that actually. Um, mm. Getting on, you know, you get the, the we, get, we stay in Birmingham and we get the train to Cheltenham and you get the train to Cheltenham, Cheltenham train station, you get the double decker bus yes. down, to, down to the race course and it's like clockwork and me and my mate were sitting there. I always go with just me, me, me and one other friend and we were sitting there, of course, you know, just, oh, it's all about maybe half ten in the morning, eleven o'clock. We're all excited. And this big, massive guy gets on the double-decker. And he's got a big wad of 15 notes. And he goes, if you remember who was favourite that year, get your money on Irvine. Irvine can't win. Yes. Or Irvine can't lose. Yes. And I thought it was a Paul Nichols scores. Paul Nichols. And I thought it was obviously a bit of banter. So I said, I'll give you a ten to one. He'll not get up the hill. And the next thing, he just absolutely turned on me. And he said, you F and Irish think you know F and everything. And I thought, I'm going to get punched here. This is half 10, 11 in the morning. And we managed to just get off. This is just as we were you know, arriving at the, at the track. And me and my friend sort of scuttled out. He's a big lad and with a few of his mates. And I've never heard a cheer like it when Vitor at the top of the hill and the on-course commentator says, uh, and Irvine's the first at work. And there's a big massive roar. And I've never been as happy about that. And then Vitor coming through the wind was. You didn't get the same bus. You didn't get the same bus back yet. No. No. no definitely. <laughs> no. It just was one of my. It's a, it's a memory. I thought, geez, I might not even make it to the racing here. Like, just made it to the track. So I was, some great times over the last the last thirty forty years at Cheltenham, and hopefully be a, be a few more. Yeah. Um, what about we we'll get stuck into day one? Yeah, whatever suits me. Go ahead. All right. So. Uh... Okay, so day one, you've got the Cheltenham Roar, or yeah. half past one, so yes. you're in Davos. Yes. Where will you be then? 
Um, what will it be? That's a good point this year. I, I, I hope to be not sitting and uh, having been drinking all day in the box. That, that'll be the first <laughs> oh, yes, thing. That's not, right, that's not good. I'd rather, I rather, I have two spots I'd like to watch the racing from. Uh, Whenever the big stand, new stands weren't up, we used to watch it from the third pillar in the promenade. If you if yeah, you yeah. if you're stand by the bookmakers on the rails, mm -hmm. and you just go into the third pillar and stand there, we used to always meet there. That was the place we always went to. And if you get lost, I took my mother one year, and she got lost, but I always told her to go back to that third pillar, and somebody will pick you up there. <laughs> no eating place. And uh, what else? Where else would we go to? There's a new where the uh, members bar is now, uh, just opposite the last close. Between the last hurdle, halfway between the last hurdle and the line, there's a great new stand where you can stand there. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really, you get a great view. And to be honest, it's a nicer view than the one where you want. You used to want to be at the finishing line. Yeah. But that's not as important now because of yeah. TV screens and all that yeah. thing. All right. I, I think it's it's, a, it's such a great place to go early. And I just love soaking it up, walking around. All the, yes. There's all the shops out the back and there's all so much to do. And do you go to the Guinness Village much or what do you do? I, I don't really. Cra I, I it's like crammed, have, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I like to have a pint maybe when I get there. Just to sort of maybe soak up out of the atmosphere. I'm, I'm not saying. there. I'm not there for pints. No, it's there. two. It's two or three you beers know. in the morning at Max Nats. Max, it. yeah. And it's meet. I remember when the new one was run the champion hurdle. Um, I think did Hurricane beat him that year? Or Jetski beat him. Um, could have been Rock Art Rock Connor. on Ruby maybe. No. Or Connor fell. Uh, I think it was at the Jetski one. That 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 was or Connor fell in the. That's right. Champion, yeah, it wasn't yes, champion hurdle. Um, but all the lads were wearing new one scarves, so bumping into them in the pub and having a bit of crack with them, you know, in the Arkle bar. And it was just a bit of, you know, atmosphere, you know, beforehand was fantastic. But I think last year was so, so busy, you know. I'm not, I'm not to say, I'm not there for a pint. I'm there to watch a race and I can have as many pints. Well, as was it busier it. last year than what you normally is it? Last year was the busiest I've ever... ever Even seen. on the Tuesday? On the Tuesday, it was... Um, I'd probably say that it was the least enjoyable day I've ever had on a track. Right. In terms of... Crammed? Not betting-wise. I mean, honeysuckle saved the day, obviously, in terms of the enjoyment. But it was so busy. You know, right. It was just... I think this year, from what I know, they're letting twelve thousand people less. Yes, I think it is. On the yes. first day, yes. Um, it was literally standing. It's like that. Is that right? The whole day. Oh yeah. Yeah, and um, not that you'd want to be queuing up in bars, but I can't. I know people always give off about the price of pints, but there's plenty of places in the world to go for pints that aren't seven fifty <laughs> and eight pound. That's not Cheltenham, so um, I don't know why you'd want to be paying a hundred odd pound in to go and stand in a bar and not watch the. Not watch racing, but uh, each to their own. That's, people that's, get uh, ensconced sometimes yeah. and don't want to get a corner of the bar and never leave it. Yeah, and, and, that's, and that's, that, that's the danger of it. And so we've, then, we've all done it. Oh, I do love it. I'll be certainly having that. Hopefully, maybe some champagne maybe on the Tuesday. Oh, very well, good. If things go so what, what if, what's your, I'm allowed to ask, what, 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 have you uh, some selections already made for Tuesday for? Oh, it? yes. Uh, I have a, have a couple of, I would do, I love my anti post bets, as you know. I like an old bet months in advance and think these are going to go there. Now, again, plenty of anti post bets don't turn up. I tell they don't you. Get to the I know race. all about that, yeah. I yeah. have one from a, that I did before last Cheltenham. Um, and you might remember one of the preview nights last year. I don't think it's not one I attended, must have watched it online. David Casey was talking about Ela Tay Thompson. Very good. Oh, he was running, he ran in the. Uh, he, he ran in the uh, he, he ran the Triumph last year, did he not? Or did he run the Supreme? I can't remember. No, but he's running the Supreme this year. Yes. He, he beat Fasil Vega. Don't yes, yeah, that's right. That, yeah. But I think the question must have been, have you any horses for next year? Any novices coming out to keep an eye on? And he said, Ila Tam Thompson should be you know, one, one to keep an eye on. And I think anyone with half a head as well knew John Bond was probably going to go to the Oracle. Yes. You know, last year yes. it was kind of like John yes. Bond's going to go. Yes. He's going to hurdle and then he's going to go to the Oracle. Going to do the sprinter sacker route, so I did a two pound fifty double on either ten times and John Bond forty to one and ten to one. Very good. So I have it, I can show you it if I have it on, on Skybet. Oh, no, so I'd be, I'd be, I would be just cuddle up, <laughs> it's about, cuddle up. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's I think it's paying about 14, 1300 pounds. Very right? good. And it's and when either ten times won it, I, I kind of thought it was about dead in the water, you know. John yes. Bond at ten to one, um, I'm happy enough for that. Um, and either ten came out and won a dull race vessel, and I think. This is, we'll talk about the Supreme now. If that Supreme, people think Eli Tate Thompson is a, is a bit of a doer stare. He's, you know, Facile, they're all a lot quicker than him. Why would the Supreme not be a complete cavalry charge from the start with Eli Tate Thompson ready to pick the pieces up at the end? Well, it tends, to, it tends to be that way, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a, I think it's it the, the old course tends to be they, they go hammers and tongs the whole way around, but the other yeah. one, they don't go that hammer and tongs. They sprint more the last half yeah. half mile or so. But What, uh, what are you thinking then? For, this, for We'll start with the Supreme. Well, we'll Supreme, I, I, I back one of Willie's uh, 
other ones diverge. Diverge? Yes, he was a big price. If I, I've just backed, I actually don't have an opinion on the Supreme at this moment in time because it's hard to work out. I have a couple of good stats for you if you're interested. Oh, yes, that's what we want, yeah. Allegedly, uh, champion favour in 2013 is the only champion bumper winner to double up since. So that was uh, at Sierra yeah. Fasal Vega for him. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see. 15 of the last 17 won last time out, which might give a problem with Fasal Vega too. Uh, you need to have in seven of the last ten W Mullins has trained at least one horse to finish in the first two so that's, that suits yeah. you yeah. <laughs> that's right there. Yeah. and uh, let's see appreciate the only horse to do the Christmas Leperstown you know group one at Christmas yeah. and Supreme Double so therefore it's, that doesn't happen that often yeah. so but uh, again Take all this with a, a, a pinch of salt. Of right? <laughs> but, but it goes to show you how tough it is to get these horses ready. Oh, very much so. Yeah. You know, do you, what do you think about Fasil Vega? Uh, well, it was disappointing the last time. So. Uh, do you think he can come back? I don't know. Um, well, he probably thinks so, but uh, they, they tend to be bumper horses. Do tend to be get long, need longer trips as they get as they get. You know, as they get uh, older or such, don't they can start with bumpers because they're doing two miles flat racing. It's like yes, it is. It's but it's like four year olds running the triumph. After a while, they need to do two and a half miles to to three yeah. things like that. So I don't know, but uh, yes, I think if they do go off like the clappers, like they did at Dublin Racing Festival, and if was it high definition, I think took them. Yeah, well, he's got a, he's got a chance, I think, but he's got what's another stat he has. Falling last time out, yeah. or no? Did he fall or did he on seat? I can't. He, I, I, he did. Well, he, whatever happened, he, did, yes. he certainly didn't finish the race. Yes. At Leperstown there, um, I think if you're going to go off like the clappers, and get to the bottom of that hill, you know, that's a yes. it, it can be a big hill. Yeah, well, a, Joseph, lot of, a lot of things happen on that hill. Joseph O'Brien was quite confident last night. I saw him on some show with he seemed very keen on high definition, which is fair enough. Well, I'd be happy enough if he and, and can't jump. I didn't know was that a problem. With that. Well, that, yeah, if you can't get round, you're not, you're not okay. winning anything. Okay. Yeah, um, but that, that's that's a uh, good luck. Good luck with that bet. I'll be thinking of you. Well, so <laughs> I have to tell you about another lucky thirty-one I did last year. As okay, well. okay. I thought it was dead in the water and has now come back to life okay. after the last few months. So, so Supreme, you I'm really much of an opinion on. Yeah, um, wouldn't be one of the bigger betting races of the week. What about the Oracle then? Uh, well, the Oracle's uh, potential to be fantastic. Well, I thought it, you know, actually before Dublin, before Leperstown a few weeks ago, which by the way was one of the best two days, not in terms of punting wise, but in terms of enjoyment wise, I think I've ever had. Right. I've been to Dublin Festival every year, but it seemed to get better and a lot more enjoyable. Why well, went for Hayden's year the time he won the. And I'm going, I've already, we've already booked tickets for next year. Oh, yeah. Okay, I, think. I think one of the questions I want to ask you later is one of your favourite moments in the racetrack. For he went in the flue gas from these. That was, that was, that was, that was quite amazing. Yeah. Some, no, some noise. Yeah. Un, uh, unreal. Uh, so, going to the Oracle then, I think before the Dublin Racing Festival, we had sort of three live chances from Ireland. Taking on John Bond was the, seemed to be the thought. Plus any other horses, of course not. I'm not, I uh, don't mean to be talking down about anyone else, but that seemed to be the, but four real live chances of who, of who could be favourite, and now it's come down to El Fabiolo and John Bond. Well, they've still got Dysart Dynamo in there, they're talking yeah, about yeah. that he'd like a shorter trip as such, but he didn't, he ran he ran too free last year in the, in the Supreme, so they've always got that issue, but the, let's see your stats for that then. Um, Henderson, Nicky Henderson has run nine with a hurdle rating of one four five plus. Five of those nine won, and three others finished second, so that's pretty good for John Bond. Yeah, it's pretty good for John Bond. Okay, so that's all right. Um... 15 of the last 16 had previously raced at Cheltenham. I don't think El Fabio's been around there, has he? I don't no, think so. He hasn't. So that's okay. And uh, let me think now where else. It, uh, I've got another one here for you. Oh, there's, oh, there, there's your favourites. All right. Uh, <laughs> there's a, the last, I think, uh, short priced favourites in this race have a fantastic record. There's about eight of the last in, uh, 10. Were all short price favorite. Even Eberstone went five to two, but the ones before that were four to nine, five to six. One, all short. All the shorties go in. If there are shorties here, they go in. So I don't know what. I don't. Know. It's El Fabio's favorites at the moment. Slightly, I think about slightly. Yeah. Slightly. So that, maybe that one. Maybe it's time to kill that one. I don't know. Right. <laughs> well, it would be interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. It could potentially be one of the best races of the week. Oh, well, always um, is. It, it tends to be. It depends how fast they go. Some years ago too fast. Do you remember the year? Not that long ago. Footpad. Ah, in the Oracle, and was it St. Calvados went off? 
really uh, fast and, and uh, Ruby just judges it there was another one off too fast with him uh, I can't remember who it was David Russell one was on one too one off, the, two, the two of them ran off yeah. together like scalded cats but Ruby just judged it to perfection yeah well I think it was a yes. I was on a, it was another shorty too but. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the article? Who, who would your bet be with then? Um, I, ha- I haven't done an article no. bet, all right, no. as yet. No, I haven't really been a John Bond fan because actually he hasn't actually beaten anything uh, in my view, but I hadn't, no, I've no, I've no opinion on this yet. No opinion yet. Okay. Right, we'll go on to the, the big race of, the, of day one. Um, well, for me, it'll be the second big race of day one. I think the mayor's for me. You know my, my love affair. Of well, if, 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 um, if I let you Tom's gone in, you'll not, you'll not be talking to too many people. <laughs> I, will, I will see you in the champagne bar. <laughs> if you let you Thompson and uh, John, I have them in two singles too, but if Good. that double lands, I'll, be, uh, I'll see you in the, the Bollinger bar for, for a, wee, a wee glass after. Very nice. Champion hurdle, then we've got a superstar in Constitution Hill. Potential superstar in Constitution Hill. Well, it's the big start to the uh, Supreme, but he's been he's been so good. And uh, he really can't see anything coming near him. I think uh, Stateman. Uh, What's well, one of my anti post books? I've got bet. I've got thirteen to two Stateman. The, the forecast between Constitution Hill and uh, Stateman. That, that's not a bad bet. Really. Yeah. And uh, uh, that's about. That's all I'm going to be. That's, you can, it's hard to think of a bet on it. I see. I see a lot of people uh, tipping up. I like to move it after winning in with Canton on uh, on Saturday. Um, but it's. If this horse is as good as we think it is, he'll, they'll, never, they'll never see which way he went. He's a star, isn't he? Yes. Like he is. Yeah. Potential to be a real superstar. Do you think he'll go chasing next year? I don't know whether he'd want to. I think he probably might. I don't know. Do you want to stay on him? They won three champion hurdles, would yeah. you not? Right there. Well, it's certainly, um, I heard at Christmas that a certain um, yellow and green owner... Oh, oh, I heard all sorts of figures being... I heard, all sorts well, of figures. I heard this from a journalist on Radio Ulster. Right. Said it, two million... Was offered, yeah, for yeah, and was turned down. Well, the man who owns it doesn't need it, doesn't need any money. So, no. and he was a very he was a great interview by from him on, uh, and he was he said those figures given to him, but wouldn't have changed his life. But he he'd have to give up owning horses because he would never own another one's good. Yeah, that's it. So he said no. The joy that Constitution Hill would bring you as an owner would be. Think that, it, um, it would depend on your financial situation, obviously. But yeah, yeah that, uh, <laughs> I think Warren Ewing had a lot to do with him here. That's right. Well, Warren and Barry Garrity, sure. Yeah, Barry, 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 Garrett, Barry, yeah. Barry and Barry Garrity's children, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah which is great. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, I think that will probably, um, I think Constitution Hill and State Man, well, Constitution Hill certainly will probably scare off quite a lot of opposition. I can't see there being too many runners. No, I, they have five or six max. Yeah, I'd say maybe five or six. Right Not so sleepy will make the running and uh, something like that. So that'll They'll be all be there to pick the pieces up. Yes. Constitution Hill will, will still be on the bridle coming well, up you'd hope. last. You, you, uh, the last thing you don't want is anything to happen. No, I, of course not. I was there one year. Uh, well, I, not, I don't want to, uh, to tempt fate, but Valera Mix fell. Um, uh, had, had had a fatal injury when 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 strolling a champion hurdle one year and it was quite just just dreadful to watch it. Really, yeah, to say. Well, don't, definitely don't want to. No, know. no. I think what we all want is the best horses to win the best races. Yes. Them. Yeah. You know we can all sit and I'm ha- I can happily watch these races with having a penny on it and, and cheer them on. Now we'll come to what I think will be hopefully the biggest cheer of the year or the, of the week in the next race, the Mare's Hurdle. Um, honeysuckle. You know I love a bit of. Rachel and Honey. Um, I've been lucky enough to be hanging out with Honeysuckle whenever she's been parading um, at Down Patrick, getting to meet her back, back in the stables on some great times. I'll have my Honeysuckle scarf on. I'll have my Honeysuckle socks on. I'll be cheering Rachel and Honey. But that stage you'll be, in a, you'll be in a bar telling people well, well, how, how, how easy it was. How easy it was. <laughs> honeysuckle, what happened there? What happened? <laughs> I think it has potential to, be a, it's potential to be a great race, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, it's great. It's great mare's hurdle. There's been all sorts of rows as to whether it should be there or not. But I, I, I'm quite happy with this. Yeah, so uh, I think Love Envoy is the one. Because if she, if there wasn't a mare's hurdle, she wouldn't be running it. She would be, no. she'd be retired. Yeah. Because one thing about forget about mares is that they get actually uh, geldings are less uh, valuable as they get older, and mares become more valuable as they get older. So people yeah. who are from breeders and, and racing people, and they they want their mares. To retire, retire to paddocks is a phrase they want to use because yeah. this this is this is important. Yeah, yeah. totally. So, so uh, yes, there's one thing about there's one thing you also should know about Rachel is bookmakers hate Rachel results. Okay, Rachel wins are never winning never are never never winners for bookmakers. Brilliant. Okay, 
the, the whole world will back Rachel That's just just in case. Yeah. No matter what the price is. I think it'll be a big massive cheer if she wins that. If it's her. If oh, very much. So. Well, it's, it's great race. You've got uh, you've got her. You've got Echoes and Rain. You've got Marie's Rock. Perhaps you may go to the stairs. Brandy Love. Was Brandy Love was out today. It was it wasn't that? We've got Queen's Brook will go as well. Yeah. And I Queen's wonder, Brook is good, but yeah, where people although there seemed to be a bit of a big drift on. Um, Brandy, yeah, Brandy today. yeah, and she, and she went left-handed coming around the corner as well. Yeah, which, so, so, but uh, that, that'll be a great race. I think it'll be fantastic. I really um the horse that I've been looking at all year and I've backed is Love Envoy. Yeah, so um, I forgot. Sorry, I forgot about her. I yeah. thought Love Envoy. Um, I think now with with Honey there, I'll definitely be invested in Honey, and and then I certainly wouldn't want to not back her when she's maybe won her won her last race. But I think Love Envoy, Harry Fry horse. Oh, I, I think what you'll find with uh, I, I personally believe. That what you'll find with Honeysuckle was exactly the same thing happened in the Irish Champion Hurdle. Honey, Honeysuckle went from two to one to a left to ten, uh, and the only reason that was is because of sentimental money. Yeah. And as, as this is her last race, I I am of the opinion she will start favourite. She's just not favourite. She's favourite the mother. I don't think she's maybe second favourite, but she'll she will start a lot shorter than what she is now. Oh yeah, I think that there'll be a last gasp dash from the, 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 the Rachel and yeah. Honeysuckle last time. Well, I'll I'll certainly be throwing sentimental. And I really actually. Uh, if I have won a big bet before, I'll have to give it to my friends. <laughs> Don't let me get too sentimental about this. Um, I think it's it'll be a. I know we've got a couple of races after that, but I think the mares would be a great way to end that day and a big big cheer for Rachel. Yes. You know. Um. What about we head on to day two then? Okay. Um. We're looking at the uh sort of the bigger races for each day. We'll, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about the handicaps after. Yeah. Then. Yeah. Um. Ballymore. Yes, this is well. This is this is Paul Nicholson, uh, Hermes Alan. That, yeah. that horse is that race at uh, at uh, Newbury has produced several winners of good races since. And uh, Willie's not altogether. There's no Sir Gerard standing out no. standing out from Willie's bunch this year yet. That may, that may obviously may may occur, but uh, that, that's that's right. Maybe that impa- what do you call it? Impasse. I can't remember. Impasse it. That's right. the one. That's right. That um, uh, the one with and the double green. I liked um, Irish Point a few months ago. Yeah, was I he not well beaten by Champ Kylie there last yeah, time? Yeah, he was. He's been well beat a few times. Yeah, I think Marine National. Beat him Will he not run in the Supreme? Marine, yeah, Marine not. But sorry, but Irish Point, I mean, got beat by him. Yes, he did. So, yeah. but I kind of fancied him since I think, and he might step up and he might run, but he hasn't really done much since that. It's pretty. It's pretty wide open that one, apart from the favourite. I think well the favourite is about three to one. Is it? Yeah. So it's it's, it's, still, it's an open race. They're still still very open. I think whenever there's an Irish hot pot, it seems to get back then too, doesn't it? Yes. And if well, well, Paul Nichols is, was one of the start. He's n- never won the Ballymore, so it's be, never won the Ballymore. No, don't know, that'd be that one for him. Uh, He's had a dry couple of years. He hasn't. I don't think he, he won at all last well, year. Well, I think. I think he 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 is of the opinion, and quite rightly so, that it's not all about Cheltenham from throughout the year, yeah, and he'll find his horses in handicaps, having much leverage. There aren't many statements hanging around Paul Nichols' yard. No, yeah. they've been out and they've been they've done the things. Well, he's well, they can hide these things up, lights under a bushel and that sort yeah. of stuff. Well, that's a bit of statement can go out and win a county, off whatever mark he was on, and he's now in second field for a champion hurdle. That's all you need to know about some of the handicapping systems. <laughs> um, Brown advisory then. Here's a horse I backed, Anti Post. Go on then. Uh, I backed it at twenty to one. Jerry Colum. Oh, very good. That's a, uh, what price is he's he now? Is he still? Is he going for definitely? He's only got one. He's only one place to go. Is that right? Yeah, they took him out of the four mile another day. I think. Very good. Um, now again, he's part of my lucky thirty-one. Whoa! So I you. have uh, love envoys. You, you'll not. You'll be. You'll uh, be giving up work shortly. Well, this this one now. <laughs> it's funny. This look. This lucky thirty-one. Uh, when it did it, maybe six seven months ago, it paid. It was a ten p each way, lucky thirty, but just pennies, just a, an interest. It was paying thirty three thousand. Okay. At the same bet today pays about five hundred pound. Very Instead good. The same, so. Oh, you're, um, you should you should never do that. What? Well, how much would this pay now? Yeah, uh, but I mean, I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I was thinking about the cash out and all, but no. Um, Okay. Uh, I will happily watch all these. Hopefully, I'll be waiting on him. Well, I'd like to. I'll oppose you with one here, uh, with okay. uh, the real whacker. The real whacker, yes. Um. I've bagged him at fancy prices, but uh, for a couple of quid. But uh, I think it's great, small stable like that. And he'll definitely go this way, do you think? He's yeah. got. He'll well, unless he goes to the Gold Cup. Yeah. Which uh, they're talking. Were about. they talking about that? Aren't yeah, they? yeah, yeah. But uh, um, he'll make the running here. You're going to get run for your money, and he'll stay. The big problem with Jerry Colum seems to be that the ground aren't the same. 
Well, it depends. Yeah, We're always saying there's going to be no rain. There's no rain. There's no rain. But first of all, the ground on Tuesday is going to be good to soft because it's going to water it. Yeah. All right. And then Wednesday last year it turned into a bog because yeah. it rained all it day. Rained right, yeah. You have no idea what's going to happen. Yeah, that's it. So you just don't know. Well, I'd be. Happy. And then by Friday it was nearly good ground again. Yeah. So that's the way their their systems work. Well, if you see me doing a, a rain dance. You'll, you'll know why that I'm waiting on Jerry Colon. Okay, so one stop for you here is the Ballymore Broadway Double, or the, I suppose what's called the Brown Advisory, has was last achieved in 1988. So that would worry about Sir, Sir Gerhard, who's supposed to be, maybe, well, he's talking about going for three miles for him. Um, anything else? Only two winners this century failed to be first or second last time out, so that that suits yours. Yeah. Okay. Jerry's that, been one that, of that, that's all right. I think one of the biggest cheers actually at the Dublin Racing Festival was in um in the Paddy Power under the under the stand when Jerry Cologne was running over in Sandown, was it? Yes, he or, won he won the Silly Isles. The, at the whole place was absolutely packed and the whole place must have had a few quid on. And Fair. he won. That so was it was great. Very good. Um Big race on the Wednesday then is the champion chase. Yep. I think after what's happened recently, it's pretty open. Very much so. This is this is a this is a. There's been a lot of people on Twitter complain about the the number of odds on shots to Cheltenham Festival. It's, it's gone to ruin. You can't get yeah. the, 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 It's not competitive all of a sudden. What well, all of a sudden with Facile Vega getting bit, uh, uh, John Bond not being very, not being particularly impressive on that and that outing of his. Uh, that an argument getting uh, bit by um, editor Dejit. We've only one odds on shot left. Yeah. So, and it's and, and it's great to see a Queen Mother where there's several horses with a chance. Yeah. I think, uh, I think um a horse that won there, gentleman to me, I don't think he really yeah should be really in the same league as the, the rest of them, but I think he's got a, as good a chance as any. Okay. And certainly if he's a decent price will be something each way I look at. It's one of my favourite stats in this race because there are uh because it's the field, you know, you know, you know who's running in this race now for next year. You know, yeah. there's only is about half a dozen horses that you know are going to actually turn up in this race. Yeah. And John Bond plus whatever's left this year, yeah. or perhaps. Well, there have been eleven odds on shots this century in the Queen Mother, and only three of one. Only three. <laughs> only this three. This century. This century. And they were at, uh, I was masterminded twice. The same mastermind, it must be. Uh, and uh, there's one at uh, four to eleven. He was at four to eleven. There's two one. Um, Alt Altior maybe. Altior. Yeah, that's. I was thinking the Duvan got turned over. Yes. Remember, do you remember the year? It was only a couple of years ago. There was was it Altior and Shakan got pulled out in the morning. Shakan got put turned over. Daffy the soil was crazy odds. And yes. he got turned over. Yes, indeed. So it. Uh, it was two to nine or something. Like. Uh. uh Altior won it at evens and at four to eleven. All right, yeah. but there's all been there's been a mountain uh, turned over. It's, sh- it's shocking at uh, at 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 that uh, small at odds on prices. It's just it's just it's because we get in a situation where we just at least prices become fact nearly. You yeah. know, it, and, and, that, and that's what and what else? Well, got another one for you. Well, Willie's Willie Brucey Willie broke a broke a great start last year in that. Uh, an argument is the first in fifteen. He hadn't raced here before. He never raced at Cheltenham before. Never been at Cheltenham. And to win a Queen Mother, to, to, to win a Queen Mother, not him. But that was just can underperformed that day. Maybe because of the well, because of the rain, I don't know. But that was just something. It was Willie's first, wasn't it? That was a one. That was he, he hadn't won. That's yeah. right. Uh, it was a good. Uh, a good, a good okay, game. I'll give you a quiz question there while we're here. All right. Yeah, we okay, go. Willie's won all the great ones, right? Okay. But which race is he due to win? Because which is the race to, of the, all the great ones that is the last? You know. Uh, uh, he hasn't won uh, recently. Hasn't won recently. Two thousand sixteen. Um, what do you think? Must be the stairs. No, uh, the Penhill. Pen Penhill. Okay then. When was the last? Day one. It must be the Gold Cup then. Day one. Supreme. Tuesday. Part of the champion. Champion hurdle. hurdle. Jeepers. I was thinking of Supreme for some reason. The champion hurdle. Annie Parr. Was Annie Parr's last one? Was that twenty seventeen? Twenty sixteen. Twenty sixteen. Okay. Statement, statement, <laughs> I like these stats, bro. You're, you're talking me into you're talking me into being a millionaire here. This is fantastic. Um, that's a good stat. If well, I, man could do it, I don't know it. It's one of it's one of my quiz questions. If you know, one of the things on the site with all the stuff I do, there's also a quiz. Yeah. So you can go on and uh, the answers are uh, you'll be able to get the answers because uh, uh, I'm not gonna uh, do I uh, do much to you, but uh, the the answers are on another page, so yeah. you can have a have a go at the quiz. quiz. Fantastic! All right. You're catching me out here. You're going to ask. No, that's the last question I'm going to ask. You're going to ask me what Jackie rides honeysuckle. I'll be able to answer that. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay just the last one on, on the um, on day two. 
not really a particularly big race, but I suppose because Tiger Old sort of made it his own for a couple of years. The cross country. Oh, I, 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 this is my... I have friends. My friends hate this race. Okay, yeah. They hate this race. I love this race. Oh, do you? I love every bit of this race. <laughs> I have made more money in this race than any other race at the Children Festival. Brilliant. Because it's easy. Yeah. Both is our king. And, yeah. Um, it's, it's, there, there are only several, there are only three or four, because it's a level, but even since it's level weights. Yeah. The, the Tiger started 6-4 for this and won it by half the track. I remember. I had bookies. There was a bookie in Belfast laying uh, Tiger Roll on Facebook for a place in sixty four, and you're thinking, what, what, what's this all about? <laughs> the game's <laughs> no. gone. I know. So that that was that, that's my that's one of my favourite races of the week, and it's a great thing. Like last year's race was fantastic because Tiger Roll got beat in the line, but dealt it, dealt the work, and yeah. uh, and and it was just a lovely thing that the the two of them, Davy Russell, because the winner was getting booed in. Yeah. Davy Russell waited for uh, Jack Kennedy on Delta Work and the two of them came in together yeah. to the parade ring. That was fantastic. I think was, the place just went very quiet all of a sudden. Remember, everyone was cheering him on. Tiger was caught in the lane. Um, I think Delta Work looks to be a bit of a shame this year. What do you think? Uh, yes, except for one thing. I have an, I have an opinion on this one. Oh, right, okay. I, um, I like this. If, if it turns into be good ground, if it's good ground, uh, it tends to be it tends to be quicker ground out on the cross country course than it does actually in the race course. Okay. Uh, if that's quicker ground, Delta Work likes to get his toe in, mm-hmm. right? Now, if it's good ground, I've backed the horse at twenty to one for this called who, who, who loves it round there and wins round there called Back in the Lash. So yeah. if you back, it, it'd be it, it'll not be much less than that on the day because it all come for Delta Work. But if yeah. it, it's a ground, it's a ground conditions bet. Yeah. If you get good ground out there, you'll not go far wrong and back in the lash. Okay. Right. Well, now, I'll... he's got a stone to find, but as you know, with, uh, um, what do you call it, one that, uh, that wins in Ireland all the time, the, ma- the ratings don't matter with cross-country races. Yeah. Right, so, I think it was a 26 fences or something, wasn't there? Oh, yes, but that's uh, you got to have horses that want to do it. Yeah. Some of the horses don't, uh, some of those handicappers who go don't really like it. It's funny how horses take to it. And, you know, like I think, Gordon Elliott talked about Tiger Roll that kind of rejuvenated him. Yes. Kind of maybe Tiger had lost his way a bit. Yes. I mean, it was he, Keith, Keith, Keith Donaghy made him, really. Yeah, well, there's a horse winning the Triumph. And then I remember, was it maybe two, three years later, back two, at Lisa O'Neill to win him. 2017. On the four miler? Yes. Yeah, I remember that. And, um, then he, and then they went, and then they went, and then he decided he didn't like to do any of that. So he just then they went because he used to headbutt the fences. Yeah. And he just and then he, all of a sudden he could ju- he jump round the entry. You know, yeah. It's hard. It's hard to believe. It's like he's just a real character horse, wasn't he? Yes. And he, so well, I'll have a um, dealt the work then maybe to win him back while Ash to come second. It's depending on the ground. Yes. Ten on the ground. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a bit of that. So into day three then. Day three people. I don't. I, I have arguments on Twitter about this all the time. Day three would be a day I would watch the runner and, and happily get rid of the rest of it. Um, I don't have don't like the stairs at all. I've always liked the stairs. <laughs> oh. Stair, stairs have been good to me. I like the stairs as a race. It's too romantic for my liking. It's all right. about the story. It's not about like if I owned horses, I wouldn't want to be. Well, three miles and you get you get a front runner. It can it can be a great race. Like but big bucks for that was fantastic. Big bucks uh, couldn't do else. <laughs> yes, but even to win to win the race four times was was quite was very impressive. I don't want to be talking down because these these horses are obviously fantastic creatures, but it's just it's not for me. If there's a, making a cup of tea, okay. if, if there's a day not to go to Cheltenham for me, it would be the, the Thursday definitely. All but right. we'll start off in the Turners. I think we have a very good hot pot, and one of my bets of the week will be in the Turners. Oh, which is Mighty Potter. Are you good? Yep, I think Mighty Potter. Um, I think might be my my, my bet of the week. Okay, I'll oppose you. Okay. With Joseph on um, Bambridge. On Bambridge, yep. Okay. I think Bambridge will, yeah, it's definitely one to think about. There I hasn't think. been no, a winner. No, don't tell me that. <laughs> don't break my heart. <laughs> okay. oh, um, right. There hasn't been a winner of the Drinmore win at. Okay, when it, because it's an early season race, yeah. right? But it's Mary Potter, which obviously will happen at some stage. Yeah. But only uh, 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 Mary Potter has completed the Drinmore and PJ Moore at a double it did it at, the, at, the, at the DRF. Yeah. Only two horses have completed that double and gone to Cheltenham in the same year. <laughs> Dorn's Pride finished uh, third in the Gold Cup. He went to the Gold Cup after, okay. after uh, and uh, Harbour Pilot unseated in the Brown Advisory. Well, nothing came to, nothing has come to this two mile four. This, uh, the thing about the this race, it's tend to be done in a fast time. 
it's not the five five minutes. Yeah. Whereas the it's only one furlong shorter than the uh, the PJ Moriarty round Leperstown, yeah. which is tends to be done in about forty seconds more. So if you watch the PJ Moriarty, and they, like, he's a great favourite, eleven to eight to me is a bit short this moment in time. I'm yeah. sure you've got him at far yeah, bigger yeah, prices. Back them. Uh, if if sure, and he probably rip up all this stuff, but uh, he he at the end of that race he was going away from him. Yeah. He's like a horse that stayed three miles. Yeah. All right. So that's just something. I don't, I'm going to try and lay all, of, <laughs> all this money up. That <laughs> but no, no, that's just uh, that's just an opinion. That's the, like, that's the beauty of this game. I think Bambridge, Bambridge, if my partner wasn't at Bambridge, it would probably be my bet. And I think Bambridge, what price would he be about now? Fives. About fives. He's still a d- decent each way. He'll cover your money. Yes. I think... He sometimes just his hurdle below. form might not be as good as uh, Mighty Potter. He runs Potter's. below par slightly the old time. Well, he did. He was well, but Mighty Potter beat him well at yeah. uh, at Ferryhouse. Uh, I but, backed Bambridge that day. And, and also, what that. happened after that was it? Well, he he went to the two miler in the DRF and was staying on. He got he snatched second in the line, didn't he? Yeah. Behind El Fabiolo. So, so, according to what uh, Joseph O'Brien was saying, he's going to this race. So it'll be a good race. But he he also has won twice around there, which helps. Yeah, that's a big thing. I'm hoping Mighty Potter will blow up across all these stats, Brian. And again, after all my see, other you come here, you come here, and you come here, and then <laughs> that's it. I'm, I'm looking to leave here with a bit of confidence. Okay, that's um, fine. Um, moving into the Ryan there, then we had the last time I was speaking to you at Down Royal. I think one of the stats you'd give me was a a horse hadn't won. And if that ran within ninety days, I'd won a grade one. Was well, that right? That's right. There was no. There was ten. Last year there last was year, ten, ten. Ten horses had tried at the Cheltenham Festival, including Appreciated, that hadn't been out in ninety days, and none of them won. However, there's a contrary stat to that which I'll have yeah. is that Willie Mullins has run twenty three horses at the Cheltenham Festival, mm-hmm. who hadn't been out for over three hundred days. Yeah, seven winners. Right. Five of them Covega. Five of them Covega. Uh, Joe's. Penhill. Uh, Penhill was one, and uh, bumper winner Joe's Cameron be certain. Um, yeah. So he won it once and it turned up. Well, well the stats that he broke on Willie's the man to do that. I have, I have, you know, on Gold Stats, you'll find yeah. a page of the things that he has <laughs> that he has that he has decided to take on. He hasn't he hasn't won a handicap chase yet, but I'm sure he's got that on his list. Do you think Shishkin is a good thing for? It? Turns up should win. And I think uh, if it was, if I ask you a question, if Alawa had turned up at uh, at uh, Ascot last week mm-hmm. and won that race like the way Shiskin won it yeah. what price would it be? Yeah, odds on Two's on yeah. Now why is this horse 5-4? to four? They're, they're, just, they're just worried about his the bounce factor his bounce well, factor yeah. and they're worried about his, his, his history but that's, only, that's the only reason I, I think my, I'm not going to back Shishkin at 5-4 not a chance okay. I happily let him win by well, the thing is 5-4 there's not much opposition in it at this no, moment in time <laughs> Well, the horse I likes Fury Road. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. He ran well at the and uh, the uh, Galloping the Champ. Had, yeah. had, was there with him at the last? No, if it was up to me, I think I said this to you last time as well. I would like Gallop on the Champ to have gone for it because I'm not down about him staying that extra. Well, I, I, couple of I think it. Uh, I agree with Tom Siegel in this in that uh, there's a stat that uh, is say you don't win a gold cup if you're ten years of age. Now, there's been one's come close to that this century, but it doesn't tend to happen. Yeah. And uh, Shiskin's nine, and Henderson's view is he's going to run this this year, yeah. he's going to try three miles of the entry, yeah. and then he's going to try and try Gold Cup next year when the horse is a year older. Yeah. Personally, uh, there's, a, there's a history here somewhere in the Gold Cup stats, somewhere on that page of mine, you'll find that the horses who have run over shorter distances and then go and try and Gold Cup do well. Yeah. So this this could this be, could be his year. It could have been his year to go for. That. I think Declan Rex was talking about um, one yes. of the few bets of the. That's right. Was he was uh, Declan Rex was on there last week and and he was he he, he did all this before he won at Ascot, yeah. which is pretty good. Yeah, no or no bet, yeah. but he's more than ninety nine percent going to turn up here, isn't he? Yeah, I think so. Rainer. Well, you you, you wouldn't. It depends, I suppose. But yes, that's, that's what they're chatting about the moment. Well, Nicky Henderson all... doesn't tend tend to take that. Doesn't tend to jump up windmills. Yeah. Well, that's it. He's going to enter the race yes. that he definitely thinks yes. he'll win. Yeah. I think we'll get on to the Gold Cup. I'm not sure about Galloping in this extra bit. I thought he would be an absolute shame. And I think what I was saying to you back at Down Royals, if Alaho hadn't been seen yet, when I spoke to Patrick that day, it was very much 
he was he was okay and you know he's on the way back but he probably wouldn't get a prep run in there would be enough time before that and if he didn't I think I was saying to you if he doesn't turn up and gallop and doesn't win the, the Paddy Power at the Dublin Racing Festival and with as much ease as he did he might drop back to the well driver. I think uh, uh, one of the aspects of that was they couldn't pull him up yeah, that was not was an aspect. All those trainers look for an up and he's good past the line. Why, why, why yeah. can actually stop him? But uh, yeah, well, the thing about it, there's not much in that race really. No, I don't. Maybe you know what have you got? Um, well, um, there's a couple of others, but I can't remember. Who, who? Tell me. Let's just one second. We'll check. I uh, think Fury Road yes. for me is definitely going to be my better in that race. Good. Um, I haven't done it yet, so I don't I'm know. pretty sure I've backed Alaho and doubles and trebles with. Big like, price. I would have a go at Hitman each way. No, man. Each way, I know, I know he's beaten Newbury, but uh, if it's good ground, two and a half miles, it'll be a, it'll be a decent price. You know what? That it might be just the one. Do you think he's in the class of Shifton? No, not at all. Not at all. No, not, but uh, that was just my view on a bet on that race. I think. I'm just try. I'm just checking here. Yeah, no, I, th- I think my, my money is definitely going to be with Fury Road at the minute. Um, again, things will change in the day. And Blue I'm Lord gonna... might turn up here because he was too slow for the two mile. Janet Del ran well. What so happened to Blue French Lord Dynamite at Dublin? Um, just was just a bit just too slow. Hap- just, just, bit, bit, just a bit slow. Yeah, yeah it'd be an interesting race. I think the runner was missing a star if Alho's not there. If Shishkin does come back, well, uh, he is the star. Yeah, right? he is the star. So, yeah, okay. but he has to go out and do it again. Now we'll we'll come to um, again. I think do you remember the year Paisley Park won the stairs? Yes. Frodo won the runner, and it was all it was just a real big love in. Everyone loved it. It was the best day of Cheltenham ever. Um, I hadn't backed Frodo on, so <laughs> I can't remember who had backed that day. Um, and I hadn't backed Paisley Park, so I wasn't enjoying it too well. But thinking about the stairs, as, as I said to you before, it's not a race that I'm down about. This year, I had a good bet on Chopu. Right, good man, yes. From before he won at Gorn. Excellent. And I thought, here we go. Blazing Cal has disappeared and will not be seen. Blazing Cal comes out last week. And they're now vying for favouritism. Well, the Blazing Cal's 5 to 2, favourite and Tupo's about 4 5 to 9 to 2. 9 to 2, has he gone out that much? Yeah. 9 to 2, cheaper. He was, he was 11 to 4 at one stage. So it, I think it's not just between them two, obviously. No. You've got Cromwell's Florin Porter, um, maybe hasn't run too well this year, but. No. Um, with the Danny Mullins, I think the one of the best jockeys about at the minute. Okay. I think he's not getting enough credit. Really I think Home by the Lee's still on it. Home by the Lee's definitely still on it. Yeah. Uh, he's won what, two good races this year and uh, he will make them go. So it, uh, it'll be the just... That blazing call looked to be some horse though, didn't he? Yes, that was good that day. Uh, that was at uh, the Boyne Hurdle. At, I think at the best form out of any of them though was Chopu beating Honeysuckle at, at the Hatton's Grace. And classical dream. There's a grind question about the hippo, isn't it? They, they like softer yeah, grind. I think. Well, that, that they seem to say that, but Gordon's quick to say no. Okay. They just um, they, they, he'll be fine on any ground. It's, and it's, over three, I mean, he'll he'll stay all day. I'm hoping. Well, it's not one. It's one you. It's one you. Do, it's a race you don't like. I do like it. I it's, I'll tell you something about Chopu though. You'll notice that we're both pronouncing it slightly different. To hippo. To hippo. So, in my former life. I, I like a bit of surfing. I like to go to Donegal and I like to do a bit of surfing. Yeah. Not any good at all, but I enjoy going in the water, splashing about, thinking I'm, you know, Patrick Swayze and Point Break. And I used to buy surf magazines. And there's a place, the other side of the world, and it's spelt the same as that horse, Chopu. T E A H U P O. Now, I'm guessing it's probably named after the surf resort. Um, it's, it's the other side of the world, a little island. And it's pronounced Chopu. Okay. And I remember years ago going, have you seen this surf magazine? The biggest wave in the world is in a place called Tiahupu Apu. And people going, man, it's not pronounced that, it's pronounced Chopu. And it's pronounced Chopu. And I think I was speaking to Jerry Hallan about it one day at Dundalk, saying, you know, that horse is called Chopu, but everyone calls it Tiahupu. <laughs> um, so I think I'm totally right about this. And no doubt I'm totally wrong. What did Jerry say? Um, just smiled and said thank you very much for that. <laughs> I think I was then talking about Roaring Bull to him, so he probably had enough of me at that okay, stage. All right. um, so, who do you think then? Who's your... Home by the Lee. Home by the Lee, you're going to go for that? Yeah. Home, what price is Home by the Lee at the moment? Uh, six or seven. It's okay. okay. Well, hopefully by... Uh, I think actually in this lucky 31, I have Blaze and Cal backed. 
Okay. And it's the last one. If they're lucky, 31. Oh, well, that's so it. now, if Blaze and Cal comes up to win and I've got the other four up, we could be in party time. Could be. Could be in party time. Mm-hmm. Right, we'll move on to day four then, the final day of the Cheltenham Festival. It starts off in a race, I think, um, with a triumph. One of my a memory of this was Barazan. Do you remember Barazan? Gonna, the triumph, uh, he got caught in the lane. 20 lengths clear up the hill. Yep. And uh, he got caught in the line. I remember back in Barazan. Um, about 20 to 1. Evan Williams? To Evan Williams? Maybe I'm not sure. Did Barry Gardy beat him? I remember that. Barry Gardy got his horse up in the line a bit. Anyway, just another Cheltenham, a Cheltenham memory I have. Triumph Hurdle this year. We've got Lozzy Mouth. Um, Lozzy Mouth seemed to be the one that was going to win relatively easy. Blood Destiny. I have backed a good few months ago for it. Good. Lozzy Mouth now got turned over at the Dublin Racing Festival. That, that seemed to be that the issue with... Well, he was quick to, to blame Paul after, which doesn't happen too often. But town end kind of got the blame. Lozzy Mouth went back into the stable, mate, and kind of lost position and then ran... Well, he seemed to think Paul gave him... Gave her yes, a, I saw it, yeah. Right, a, a bit right, of a hard ride. Right. Yeah, yeah. Where do you sit in the, the triumph, Brian? Uh, I like script writer. I like the English one. Okay. Um... Didn't get a great ride, but Paddy Brown last time out uh, rated over, over 100, 105, I think he is, on the flat. Doesn't jump as good, but I am hoping for decent ground on the Friday. And at 20, 25 to 1, I'll take on the Irish. You're going to take them on? Yeah. What do you think of Blood Destiny? But, uh, he will make the running, so hopefully. Script, like- script writer doesn't like, script writer just wants to jog behind horses, so Brennan has to. Ha- Put him on that. It was a there was an awful row between jockey and trainer yeah. on the last one, the last ride that he did in I think trials day. But uh, uh, Brennan has to put him on right beside him on the line. To yeah. get to, to, to oh do. really? So that's what. But the 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 big thing about that that course, as you well know, it there was there is only one hurdle in the last seven furlongs. Yeah. And that for therefore flat speed should be able to help in those circumstances. Now, whether well, these animals may eat them alive, I don't know, but uh, I'll, I'll take, the price will take that. I get the feeling that with the front running, sometimes you can steal that, can't you? Well, it, uh, we got, Goshen was a, was a freak that year. Yeah. Uh, I thought, um, but if, you get, if you've got horses who have decent flat form, it's the worst thing for a, a horse that should be running, script rider should be running in the uh, Ebor, for example. So yeah. therefore, he does not want a six furlong sprint. He no. wants a, a steady pace the whole way through. So if you've yeah. got Blood Destiny, Lossy Mouth, going at it, Hammer and Tongs, yeah. so there's a chance. There's a chance for it, yeah. yeah. Well, that's what, that hill changes everything. Dreams are won and lost, and the fortunes are won and lost in that yeah. hill. Yeah. We've seen it happen many a time before. I was actually looking at something the other day. I really fancied Mike Bite a few years ago for the RSA. Yes. When he won, uh, bring it back to him at Christmas, you know, he won the Cotto Star. He did. And I um, thought Mike Bite was going to be one of the big bets of the week. And do you remember when he came over the last, he went, took the head staggers? Turned right. And turned right into the stand. Was he... The I was there, was, I was there. He was going down the chute, was that what the thought he, he was going to do? He just did an awkward old cuss um, and he said he had enough. Whisper. The other one passed him and said, oh, I better, I better move on here. Yeah, Whisper uh, came by him. Good, good, ready, then, good ready to get him back up. Whew, that was, that was, a, that was a relief, certainly, that day, yes, I remember. Yes. Um, but yeah, so the Triumph, you're going to go for the script writer then? Big price, yeah. Okay. Um, County Hurdle's always going to be a bit of a, I know it's a handicap, but... I quite like it for some reason. It always seems to throw up either ex champion hurdle, great not not champion hurdle winners, but the champion hurdle, you know, horses. Um, Arctic well, Fire. Well, two years ago, I got lots of uh, messages from friends and saying, "Surely you backed Belfast Banter, oh. didn't you?" Uh, uh, no, <laughs> I've had the exact same. <laughs> I had the exact same. This is why I don't like to go racing with people who aren't racing people. I had a good bet on Petit Michoir that day. Oh dear! I thought you know, great one. Led over the last two. Oh. I was grade one on a handicap and a really good grade one horse um, and I had the exact same thing people like I had two pound in Belfast did you not back it that did you not back it good no I had a good bet on a proper horse but sure um, County Hurdle Dan Skelton he'll no doubt have something backed in he always does every he usually day. has a horse that's experienced it doesn't want up with novices he's got a novice in this year he hasn't won up with a novice before all right, so that's just something to bear in mind. Is really? his, he, he wins it with seven, eight rules. Okay, is there any good stats about the county? Uh, since uh, 1991, only two previous course winners have won it. Both were second season novices. So therefore, it, uh, it, 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 this idea that, it's just something that amuses me sometimes, and that 
people think course winners and handicap hurdles is sometimes a good idea, but sometimes it's not because you get some of these horses go there once, going, I'm not coming back up that hill again. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, and uh, what was the last? What's the other one? Eight, uh, yes, eighteen of twenty. Last twenty, either novices or second season hurdlers. Irish have trained nine of the last thirteen. W Mullins was six. Six of the last thirteen. Jeez. They're big stats, aren't they? <laughs> they just they really are. Um, I think the yeah, fancy a skeleton horse. He has trained three of the last seven, but none had raced since at least Boxing Day. They're all hidden away. Protect them more, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Not the rule. So maybe I, I, maybe he's, maybe he's got a new one, but that's, that's just that just seems to be his his modus operandi. It's fun. Some trainers protect marks and they get right. they get in a lot of trouble for it. Don't they? It's not a race I spend a lot of time on because I'm the clue. No, <laughs> I think it's what's well, a bit of a cavalry charge. I always remember. Right, we'll get on to the, the sort of the, the final race. We'll maybe talk about. Um, well, we can have a chat about the handy pack, hand, the handicaps and things after. But the Gold Cup is the big race of the week. Yep. I'm sure you have some delightful stats. Oh yes, there's the, the well. I think Apley Tarn, okay, none age, nothing aged ten years or over, including four favourites. In the last, this century, this is this century. All right, so yeah. nothing aged, uh, nothing ran on heavy ground this season. So if you think about Manila Endo and Statler racing around Tremor, Tremor New Year's Day, yeah. okay, that, that was supposed to be heavy ground. Uh, your thing and that uh, only no only two had previously raced over further than the the gold cup trip so the, what they they tend to have run up to three miles every every says well there's an extra two and a half furlongs doesn't tend doesn't tend to cause any problems doesn't tend to matter then no because if you look at Apple tower last year they went slow enough for the first circuit and she just appeared on the up about, about 200 yards ago went past and though the way wasn't wasn't yeah. there yeah. That, no, so it doesn't actually the idea of having to stay you know you have to you have to stay obviously but you have to be three miles the three miles two and a half doesn't seem to make a big pile of difference uh, no Cotswolds double who won the Cotswold this year I can't remember now we've got that. Um, uh, only two in the last this century failed to finish first or second last time out so if you've any horses been outside the first two yeah. last time it's difficult yeah. Something. Yeah. So that's all. And every every winner this season was already a, was already a group one winner. So I don't know who that, that horse is like the real whacker. That doesn't. That's not easy for them. And uh, even Coney Gray had won a group group one. But he was only a novice. He'd only so that sort of I think thing. Uh, Coney Gray. He blew a load of stats apart, didn't he? Yeah. Well, he was a novice. He was a novice, and he only had three chase runs, and he went off in front and they couldn't catch him. Yeah. But then that was a great thing about that race was that Coney Gray didn't know who was behind him. Yeah, that's it. He, <laughs> he, didn't, didn't, know what he, he didn't know how experienced they were. They he didn't know what the stats said. Like, yeah. um, I think he came out and ran another couple of times, and that sort of yes. that was kind of the end of him, wasn't it? Uh, well, I, it, it, I think a horse will all like the sea do well this year for, for Shark Handling. Yes, Hewick. I think would all that would be a real story, wouldn't it? I don't. I'm not sure of that coming from uh, Galway Plates. Uh, Le, Le Stole, Le Stole Na- Nationals, Kerry Nationals. The American, and, and American, Grand American, American Grand National to a gold cup. It'll be some, it'll be some, it's some track. It'll be some story. That would be some stats. Br- <laughs> 800 pounds or something. Good luck to him. Good, 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 good luck to him. And good, that's what I think. You see, that's, a dip, that's probably, you know, they've got this one horse, so they're going to get have a go at it. Yeah. Whereas Nicky would pull back a little bit. Yeah. That's a, He's a bit conservative when yeah, it comes to so that's it, because he has so many good horses. That time. But, but yes. It, it's a great story. And I think things like this need to happen once in a while. To let the working man sort of have a chance. And, you know, so, what do you do. fancy? What have you backed in this one? Uh, don't fancy Gallop in the Shops at all. Right, right. Uh, I think the price is just all wrong. Um, now, he looked to be cruising last year against Bob Ollinger in the, so the Turners, yep. whatever it's called these days. Um, and then he fell. Um, so, he looked to be cruising that okay. I think he would, we're happy enough that he would have won that by 10 or 20 lengths if he'd stayed up. The Gold Cup is getting into a row with Fury Road. At the Dublin Racing Festival, coming over the last, now I know he pretty he shook him off quite quickly, but is getting is beating Fury Road, or getting into a row with him coming over the last is that Gold Cup winning form? I'm not sure it is. I'm not sure what there is in England really. No, I I, I think. Noble Yates is going to have to have a chance. Okay. I think the way he came up the hill was it. What about Mister Nichols' horse? Yes, well, that was the old, um gentleman's game. I think Brave Man's Game, yeah. Brave Man's, Brave Man's Game, game sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Brave Man's Game. I think he won the won a good um, King George. The King George. I thought he won quite well in that. Now I know the last few years King George winners haven't really 
Really? Last King George winner, I think, was Caller. Long Run 2013. Long, I was going to say Cotter or Long Run, it would have been. Or Cotter, long or Run? Yeah. 2011 um, Long Run. Long Run, there you go. No, so that's, tw- that's 12 years. 12 years ago. Yeah. I think, do you remember Sylvan Aco Conte? Um, he won the King George and just couldn't get up the hill. You know, and we've had Key Card when he won the King George. Was that about 2015, was it? Yes, yes. Do you remember he fell coming down the hill? Uh, I don't um, want to talk about that because no, no, no. uh, that uh, I, still I, 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 he was he was uh, he was paying a lot for me that. Oh, <laughs> he, um, I, th- I still think he would have won that. Well, um, people will say no, but uh, it's all opinions. But that'll be it's twelve years then since a King George winner's doubled up. Yeah, maybe it's due. Well, Paul Nichols is very, very, very bullish about this. He's always Every, bullish. He's oh, been, yeah, uh, but I think he's he is. I don't think he's any worries about it. I think he's going there thinking that he's going to win. You know. And I think Noble Yates, I can't remember what race was it now. Remember, he looked like he turned the afterburners on. Um, um, at, was it at, back in November? Time? It was, was an Charlie Hall. Entry, was it? Entry. Entry was it? Um, he just looked at, had another gear when it mattered. And coming up that hill is something you'll. Many clouds chase. Many clouds chase. Um, I think whenever you're coming up that hill, when things are maybe getting a bit tired, and that, you, know, when the, you know, when the race starts to take shape coming down the hill, he'll still be sitting. You know, not not quite at the back, but he'll be, he'll not, he'll certainly not be up the front. And when it's coming over the two out, and the race is really come, and if the afterburners need to go on, when horses start falling away, I think he. When we know after last year, well, a, a high senior didn't he win the? Uh, didn't he? He he beat him well at uh, at yeah, but at Cheltenham and but Martin, is yeah, this not the the fun of the Gold Cup though? Is we're trying to go back to what's the the, the if nobody else runs his potential, I think he wins it. Okay. Okay. What okay. do you think? I haven't, I haven't done a bet, so I don't. I haven't. It's a race. I really don't have an opinion on yet. Um, no, I don't. I don't have an opinion on. It. I'm just haven't. Have I done any bets? I don't think so. I think for me, Gallop and Nishaw is just far too short. Yeah. He might go and win. If, Sh- if Shishkin, if Shishkin runs, he would. He runs. He would win, but he's not going to run. So. Do you think? No, he'll not run. But no, sorry. Do you think he'd win if he was out? He he go close. Really? Yeah. I'm not. I think he's just slightly too fragile for it. Yeah, but this is what it's all about. It's a yeah, game of opinion. Yeah, if we're all right all the time, sure, there'd be no fun. We'd all be millionaires. There'd, be, there'd so. be no boogies. No, that's it. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty much all the big races that we've done. You know, we've, we've, we've spoken quite quite a length there. What about is there any other horses? Any handicap bets or any? Yeah, I'll, gi- I'll, gi- I'll give you two okay. at a fancy. Yeah. Um, and one of them depends on something. I think that uh, the Ultima winner from last year, since you were the has as much chance this year as he got last year. He's got only six pounds higher. Um, it's been done before by Anton Portu, done by, done by the pipes. Single farm payment. <laughs> so, yes. well, me still. At, well, he, he didn't like the pass horses. And uh, it's 14 to 1 to 1. So yeah. that was that's And it's uh, a court rambler still. And on the same day, to make a, make a very decent Tuesday for you, uh, uh, I think if we've, we saw him win. If if they let Cougar make the running, in the Boodles. In the Boodles. Right. If they just make, I think Cougar, because he won his maiden, in the flat. He's a, he's a ninety plus flat, and he won his maiden by being out front. And when he ran against uh, Lost him out at Christmas, mm-hmm. they just they couldn't. He was pulling the head off him for about a mile, and he stopped. So that and Padraig Roach won that race last year. Yeah. With Brazil. I backed Cougar for the Ulster Derby. Did you? Do you remember? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, there was he was he there was he was <laughs> he was no he was he wasn't badly wasn't he balked at one stage when the bit of interference in the last for long or two and that if I remember rightly he finished third in the end. Third, I know he was there was there was there was an interference in that but that's still that's a quality yeah that's a quality race if he gets if it's half decent ground um, and he's sixteen eighteen to one at the moment you know, was, a, was that our Colin Keane night? Do you remember we had a Colin Keane night at Downrow? He won oh, he won for no that no uh, that, that was, was that, uh, that, 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 that was, was July meeting. July meeting. So it was mid so, so that, that's my only two. Unless you what have you have for handicaps or anything? Nothing. I haven't really had a proper good look at yeah. it. I know. I think this one that finished third behind Lassie Mouth and Gala Marceau at Dublin Racing Festival seems to be. I think he's his JP just bought him. What do you call there's, him? Is it Takao or something? He he's going for the boat. Yes, yeah. yes. He, he, owned, he already owned him. I think we already owned it. That's favourite now, so there'd be no price in it. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. But he looks to be. Well, he's got the JP colours and yes, 
JP likes the well, he's third in the group one him. there for you, you gotta yeah, say, he's got so, a chance. Uh, but if those other two look to be, yeah, pretty good, um, anything else? Uh, Cork Rambler that, that single farm payment, just when you, you mentioned that, um, Cork Rambler doubling up there, it brought back horrible memories of single farm payment. A couple of friends of mine would, 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 uh, would be the same as, as you, they weren't happy out there. I had backed them for months beforehand, mm-hmm. not each way. 33s, 25, 20s, on the day, thinking, just need to collect the money. <laughs> he, was, he was the price-wise selection in the morning. He was 10 to 1 in the morning, yeah. and he was turned 5 to 1 favourite. Yeah, he went off favourite. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, let's just collect And money. as he came up to you out, you thought, well, it's just money. There, I John. was standing just back from the line, and I remember <laughs> thinking, that's it. And then as soon as, and, uh, was it, pretty sure, was that Tom Scudamore got up on him? On, on the top board on, he was on top board yeah. he wrote both years then it said photograph and I think it was I was dry booking all over the place this was sort of the end of it like um, right okay so I think we've had a we've pretty much done 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 the full Cheltenham here um, I'll just uh, for one wee last section just quick questions Brian. go on then okay so the quick questions just a few if that's okay for you Brian. Right. What is your favourite ever racing moment? Either one you can be there for, or one you can maybe watch at home. Um, well, I suppose it's a, it's a very selfish one, but a horse called John Spirit won the uh, Paddy Power uh, race one year, and he's a horse that's won me the most money ever. Oh, brilliant! Well, <laughs> Sorry, I'll not that. ask how much. Um, but you're smiling. It must have been yeah. good. All right. Um, and were you there for that? No, I was here. here um, I, and the neighbours thought I was in with them. <laughs> that sounds like a good cheer <laughs> and what about at the races What's the, do you know one of your favourite days you've had at the races oh, there's been lots uh, lots of favourite days at the races I do enjoy the company when I'm with people um, my friend Robin I told you that story about uh, Rose Ravine we were standing there he'd backed uh, Crimson Embers and I had backed Rose Ravine and when it, it came out that the positions remained on the altar this is 1985 he took me by the lapels he was that annoyed <laughs> with the whole thing so that, so, so that yeah, I don't think he's ever really recovered um, but the, yes many many good days as you well know uh, if you make a few quid and you have a few beers and you're with company that's a good day that's yeah, a good day that's what it's all about getting a couple of winners isn't it yeah, well, always good, the day. good company is always uh, is good, important too um, have you a favourite horse over the years? Um, past or present? Um, past or present? Dr. Lunt. Um, okay. One, uh, uh, I backed Dr. Lunt and uh, uh, Derg round, round Ascot. Okay. Yeah. Loch Derg used to uh, round Ascot two and a half mile hurdles and he used to take a lead and he used to stack him up at Swindley Bottom. Yeah. And he used to say, okay, if you're hard enough, come past me. <laughs> and they couldn't do it. All right, and that made money him. Um, uh, Dr. Lunt, Dr. Lunt died um, at, was quite um, quite emotional about the whole thing. It was that Dr. Lunt uh, finished fourth in the Cotswolds in 2000 and collapsed over the line. Uh, you remember many clouds did the same, do you remember yeah, that? Yeah. Something? Mm-hmm. And I, I got quite upset about it and uh, I went up. And I was had been working or something. I had only seen the racing later on, and I went up and woke my wife up to tell her, and she's going, "What are you talking about? You yeah. idiot!" Yeah. So, the so next day I rang Philip Hobbs' stable yeah. to offer my condolences, which is a silly thing to do. But and I said I'd like to give a donation, you know, for anything else. And it's quite amazing. You, know, you just ring the, the stables, and you expect to be sp- talking to the secretary. Yeah. Mister Hobbs lifted the phone oh, yeah. and spoke to him, and he was just—he was lovely. You know, yeah. and that must have been a very sh- a terrible thing for them because the horse had won you know the racing post chase at uh, at camp that's on this weekend yeah. he had won that he'd been it was just a favourite horse you yeah. know you have you have them you know that oh, sort of thing oh yeah totally we all have them I, 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 we all have them like. um, now I know you've been to most tracks if not them all Is I've been right? I've been to, I've been at a race meeting at all UK and Irish tracks every one of them 86 of them 86 of them I think I've done maybe 20 not even, maybe maybe 15. Well, as, as, as you know, I work as a clerk yeah. for Dan, and uh, it's it sort of, I've done, done a lot. And then Dan used to take me to all these tracks in, in Ireland. I thought to myself, well, I should, get, I should try and get all these done. So I've, yeah. I spent, it's taken me, it, it's not, it's not, it, it, it took me about 20 years to get through them all, but yeah. I've, I've got them all done. And have you got a favourite then? It depends what you want. Um, it depends what you want for your day. If you a huge track with a great day out, uh, you can't do any better in Cheltenham. All right, it not maybe not maybe not maybe the festivals maybe one of the smaller meetings or such. It'll yeah. be great there. If you want to go to a smaller meeting, like I've I've had great days out at Hexham, 
Yeah. I've had great days out of plumping, faking them. You know, the, the smaller tracks, the race yeah. is not going to be the same quality, but you have. There's some tracks that I, I, I do I do like, uh, well, I channeled them up. With, uh, I loved Haydock. I thought it was great. I thought Les Stoll's a lovely track. I, li- I liked it there. I, I liked Garan. Garan's great. It's yeah. a really, really nice track, well laid out. Yeah. And, uh, uh, and I'm very fond of her own too. Of I have to say, Down Royal and Down Patrick do a great job. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's I thoroughly enjoy going racing there. Yeah, apparently the guys working the track are fantastic. I'm telling. I, I've heard they're good too. Yeah, but uh, no, I just that uh, I think they're two good tracks and well worth visiting. So. I think they really are. Yeah, I, yes. mean, I think the the November meeting. I think I said to you. Yeah. I'm not sure it was before the start of the podcast. One of the tracks I'd like. I'd like to go to the, the Breeders' Cup, and I'm not really a, a flat real racing fan, but I think the sort of the whole atmosphere of the Breeders' well, Cup. I've been to Ro- I went. I've been to Royal Ascot. Yeah. All right, and I was in a private box at Royal Ascot with a friend, which was really a great invite that she she needed she needed somebody to take, so I was volunteered at uh, top hat and tails. But I was the only person in the actually the whole box who knew a bit better, and I had yeah. I could have done with a you know a school of instruction, maybe a whiteboard to to, to, to yeah. give them the lessons. And yeah. the thing about a Royal Ascot is every so often people turn around and go, "Oh look, there's horses running there," because yeah. they're not actually they're not. It's it's such a social event. It's not like. I, it's a bit in my sight what I've done about this, but it tends to be an Irish thing. Is that you've been to the DRF now? The vast majority of the people who went to the DRF went racing to watch racing. Yeah, not they're not thing. they're not going. They're not going. They may have a couple of beers, they may have, but they they want to watch the horses. Yeah. So if it, if there's a queue, um, I've written thing about that. The last time I went to Cheltenham on the Tuesday, I was in the pre parade ring. You know, up up, up a top round. Yeah. So I'm running from the champ to get it uh, to get a spot to watch the champion hurdle just in front of the just about halfway up running and I go past you know the, the large expensive pizza van that sits between the two at the top at the top uh, at the between the two parade rings there's, yeah. a, there's a big big pizza van there's about 15 minutes to go for the off there's 50 people queuing there I, I thought to myself you know at this precise moment in the national calendar, do you really need food? That's it. That's it. There will be people that will go turn up on the Tuesday, and they will go straight to the Guinness Village, and this while the racing might be on a big screen, there'll be a band playing. They'll be queuing for Guinness. They'll not care who's winning what. No, and yeah. it, it, it astounds me. But at the same time, it'll be an opportunity. Yeah. It'll be the last time I get to see. I've seen Honeysuckle twice. At, so, for example, Ferry House on Hatton's Grace Day is one of my favourite days. Yes, out because because. There's really, it's a very small crowd, yeah. and you could stand as for three, three yards in honeysuckle. Yeah, you know, and uh, and uh, you get a chance to see it. And she, I didn't you know if you, I've seen, seen her win two hats graces, and she's bad tempered. She comes back in. There's yeah. no, there's no fun. She's not standing for a photograph. No, no. no th- th- she's hard to take control of. No. So you can see why she's a big. She's a big Brit of a mare. But those days when she's coming, I've been to those those days when she's winning the Hatton's Grace, and. The mean the cheer. She's yes, the it's fantastic. I mean, yeah, that's, that's what we need in the, in the race. And I'm going, going to see. Say, we see Constitution Hill. We're going to see Honeysuckle. Why would you want to? I can drink later on. A, I can drink later on. Well, that, that was what I was going to say about Cheltenham. Um, last year being so so busy, the Honeysuckle. I had my Honeysuckle scarf on ready for it, and I couldn't get anywhere properly to watch the race that I wasn't sort of you know right. behind someone. I ended up watching it in the parade ring. On the uh, screen. I have friends Which, who I have friends who've, uh, who, who who have spent a lot more time watching from the, watching from the big yeah. screen than the big one. That's because yeah. well, that's well, that, you you want to go in, you want to hear the roar and things like that. That's it. Well, going back to our two tracks, um, Down Royal and Down Patrick, absolutely fantastic. Richard but, Richard Little's done a great job at Down Patrick. Yeah, it's a fantastic round. Um, and I think Emma taking over at Down Royal is very really much. A, it's been she's fantastic. she's getting the right people in. She's getting buses, yeah. kids in. It's it's great. Well, what I was going to say about we're talking about your favourite track, and I like this. As I said, I'd like to go to the Breeders' Cup, and it's but I won't go to it, and I know I'll probably never go to it because it's on the same weekend as the Champion Chase in right, Labrick, right. or the Labrick Champion Chase has been in the last couple of years at Down Royal, which is the first Grade One of the season. It's the first real big race of the season. Yes. And I think there's not a hope in hell I'm missing that for anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. So unless the to go maybe run the Breeders' Cup and get them to put it a week back, I might where the surf meets the turf or whatever. Is that yes, what yes, yes. Okay. Um, have you any good anti post bets for this year yourself? And you <coughs> I've backed uh, uh, what have I, I've twelve to one on Bam Bridge and sixteens in Blood De- Blood Destiny, and uh, and have a lot of have a lot of wreckage. Elsewhere, yeah. so I have a few. 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 I have a few.
but uh, I think that's about the best I have at this moment in time. Perfect. Well, I'm nearly ready to wrap it up. Just two questions. Who is your festival lay? And who is your festival good thing? Uh, if Gaelic Warrior turns up in the Ballymore, that's a festival lay. Because you don't come to... You don't want a handicap and then go and win a great one. I don't think. Um, that's my view. That's a place lay. And what was the other one, sorry, was a question? What's your festival good thing? My festival good thing. And don't say, you're not allowed to say Constitution Hill. No, I'm not going to say Constitution Hill. I'm trying to think of where, where it would be. What a festival good thing. I think we... I, Paul, I'm not trying I think to. Many I, I would me. say uh, for me, many, many for me, part, yeah. for me, I think at prices this moment in time, Corrick Rambler. Corrick Rambler and the older one? Yeah, she, he's definitely. She said yesterday she, he's going. He said, um, on top or two, one uh, with, on seven pound higher mark. He's only a six pound higher. One off top with that second year, that's right. Uh -huh. So um, that's just uh, if you ask me for. That's probably not what you were expecting, but that's the one at the moment in my head. That I think is uh, the the great ones are. Some of the great ones at this moment in time, I think, are wide open. So it's because uh, uh, um, Willie hasn't really got no what he has half the time. Yeah. So, but that's it. But that's what I'm. Okay. Well, Brant, I'd like to thank you very much. Just before we go, how can we get in contact with you again? Well, just thank you, Paul. Uh, what I want people to remember: it's Goldstats, G A U L T S T A T S. Uh, it's goldstats.com. The site's there for your support. I hope you have a lot of fun at it, and please remember. Any small donation is very gratefully received. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time, Brian. That's the end of the, the next episode of the Lodcast. I'd like to thank Brian so much. If you can, dig deep and give as much as you can to goldstats.com uh, for the Samaritans. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.